Hello YouTube, today we're going to discuss about the design and control of a ball and plate didactic device. Uh, as you can see this presentation uh, was used uh, in my master thesis defense, uh, so let's get started. First, uh, before diving deep into this project, I would like to say why I chose this uh, project and what's the main goal behind it. So, uh, during my academic years, uh, I faced many students, including me, who had difficulties uh, understanding control theory. One of the reasons why is because it contains a lot of math, and math is uh, abstract by its nature. So, uh, the solution for that is, uh, of course, every uh, uh, control course is followed by some laboratory sessions, which can help a lot for the student to implement, to experiment, uh, uh, and apply his control knowledge on, uh, on in the real life. However, the access to these uh, laboratories can be sometimes limited. Uh, so, the idea was to create a physical plant that the student can take home can buy uh, and take it home and experiment as much as you want in order to uh, fully learn uh, control theory so hence the name uh, didactic device didactic device means it's a device that teaches uh, people so uh, at the beginning we weren't sure what type of plant we're going to choose for that and afterwards, uh, I came up with a, a list of requirements, a list of attributes that I think that the didactic device should have. Uh, these requirements are uh, as follows. It should be portable, that means it should be lightweight, uh, easy assembled and disassembled. Uh, it should be safe to operate on without any need for uh, safe equipment or uh, some staff uh, for safety. It should be affordable for the students, it should be so reasonably cheap. Uh, it should be controllable, of course. Of course, we're not trying to, to apply our control theory on something that doesn't work at the end. We want to, to stabilize the plant if it's unstable and control it. Uh, and it should be scalable if someday we want to make a higher a bigger scale of this plant it should be scalable uh, without changing much in its dynamics because we don't want to go back to the fundamental equations and do all the job again uh, and the last point which is the most important one is convenient the the, the plan should be self-explanatory it should be uh, the student should e easily visualize the changes in the states. The student should easily visualize the changes in the behavior if he applied different uh, control methods. And that point, I think, is the most important point. So between all the plants, all the possible plants that we could have came up with, uh, I was very interested in the ball and plate plant. Uh, first of all, it's very cool. All of us like to watch a, a ball rolling on a plate uh, and uh, exactly position the ball uh, in the exact place where we want it because this is the main goal of such plants. The main goal of the ball and plate is to actually control the position of the ball. Uh, for, these type of, for, for these types of plants, we, we, we need to control X and Y position of the ball. Um, so for the tea, it, it exists, this plant exists in many forms. I have included the two dof, the three dof, and the six dof. Of course, there's the one dof, which is not a ball and plate anymore. It's a ball and beam, is called. Uh, so I didn't include it here. Uh, from these, between these three forms, I chose the first one because it's the simplest one. So I need only two actuators. Uh, and the, the, the coolest thing about this two duff plant is the ability to decouple these two actuators. That means each of these two actuators, uh, I don't know if you can see uh, my mouse or not, but yeah, these two actuators 
um, each one of them is responsible to tilt this plate in uh, one uh, axis of rotation that means each one of these actuators is responsible for one uh, direction of movement of the ball one for the X and one for the Y for example however for the other uh, forms like the 3 DOF and the 6 DOF uh, well the thing is in the 3 DOF and the 6 DOF this is like uh, an over uh, over actuated plant because uh, okay we don't need uh, more than than two degrees of freedom to fulfill our goal but for these uh, plants is uh, it doesn't just give us a uh, x and y position of the ball it can give us also a, a specific height uh, so like a z and for uh, the sixth off it can give us also a rotation of the plate however these things are not very uh, important and they are mostly ignored um, so let's stick with the two doff here that's uh, the plan that I chose uh, I began with a uh, very simple uh, sketch uh, of my plan of how I would like to see my plan in the future and that's that was my starting point so at the beginning uh, I was curious on which hardware I should choose and I think that's the right approach here before doing anything before doing any mechanical design or software design or anything uh, it's pretty interesting to uh, know what kind of hardware are you looking for uh, and that's what I did so basically to to have this plant you should of course have some reading so a sensor uh, for the displacement of the ball and only the displacement of the ball we will discuss why later uh, so in order to detect or in order to uh, sense the displacement of the ball we can do that uh, using uh, many uh, types of sensors however the two sensors that I have listed here are the uh, camera and the resistive touch screen Bear in mind, uh, of course, these two are the, mo the most commonly used for these types of plants. So, uh, at the beginning, I uh, bought uh, these two. I didn't choose between them. I bought both of them. And uh, I tried both of them. And what I saw is that the resistive touchscreen is very hard to handle sometimes because they are very noisy and uh, some of them don't work under a certain threshold that means that for a resistive touch screen to give you readings about the position of the ball the ball should apply specific pressure on these uh, touch, touch screens and sometimes this threshold is, is big so you need a heavy ball to act, to act on this uh, touch screen and the problem comes when the plate rotates so when the plate rotate the contact between the, the ball and the, the plate uh, get reduced and this pressure decreases and maybe there's the, the touch screen will lose the detection of the ball and that can be a catastrophic uh, if you're trying to control the ball and it will uh, it will result in in wrong behavior of the whole plan and instability so I went with the choice of the camera even though the camera needs image processing uh, I saw that this uh, approach was very accurate and noise almost noise free for the actuator uh, I needed I'm not sure if this is clear here but what we can see is a is a main rod here to to fix the plate in its midpoint in its centroid and then we have two uh, actuators maybe I can go one slide back to uh, clearly show you how this is done so two actuators but from this angle maybe it's not very clear I will show you a clearer version of this um, sketch later on so uh, what I needed is a to give a certain command for this actuator a certain angle for this actuator to go to 
so I can do that using a step motor or a servo motor however uh, step motors usually doesn't come with encoders uh, nor do they come with a uh, uh, sorry an encoder and doesn't come with a drive step motors need drive a circuitry to to uh, decide on uh, the voltage and the uh, yeah the voltage of the I don't remember how much how much wires, but they come in uh, in many uh, in many configurations. Some of them comes with uh, I think three wires or five wires or eight wires. I'm not really sure. I uh, forgot all about step motors. However, they come. Uh, it's it's really hard to to command these uh, step motors manually. So they you need to buy a uh, circuitry called a drive. To work with these step motors and an encoder separately, but to uh, have a feedback if my uh, motor is going to the uh, angle that I wanted it to go or not. For the th servo motor, however, everything comes packed uh, inside of the uh, motor, uh, so you don't really need to buy anything separately, and that's a huge advantage. And servo motors are compact and they are cheap and they can do the job very well so why not so I went with a jo choice of servo motors here for the processing units uh, uh, unit sorry I could have chosen a Raspberry Pi that could uh, do the job of an Arduino and a computer however I didn't have this hardware and I'm not yet uh, familiar with how to use a Raspberry Pi yet so I went with the choice of Arduino and a computer and I will discuss later how the implementation goes so for the mechanical design now uh, I of course there's no perfect design uh, when talking about mechanical so what I did is I went to the community I saw many of the projects that are already done and uh, I got some motivation from them uh, I copied some of the dimensions for some uh, designs however I came up with my own uh, dimensions and my own uh, uh, design at the end and this is how it looks so this is the side view and this is the front view and uh, the, the next slide will talk about each uh, component uh, very fast in details so what I did is I uh, fixed some assumptions at the beginning uh, like the size of the plate and the height of this plate and I, I, I chose them to be reasonably enough for the student to experiment on and reasonably lightweight and compact for the student to take it wherever he wants and to be easily assembled and disassembled uh, and there of course was uh, uh, some availabilities in the market in terms of uh, material and uh, manufacturing technologies and that's why I chose uh, some of these uh, materials like the plywood carbon fiber and PLA for 3d printing so these were some assumptions that I fixed at the beginning um, of course it's totally okay to fix some assumptions at the beginning and if you came up with any problems later on you can change some of these assumptions and um, it, it's an iterative process actually it's an, uh, mechanical designing is an iterative process to uh, keep changing and finally come to something that really suits your need um, here there was a tricky choice that I made which are the joints between the uh, rods and the servo arm and the joint between the rod and the plate so the joint between the rod and the servo arm I chose a rod and bearing you can choose you can choose a rocker ball joint it will also do the job and for this joint I used the universal joint I could have used a magnetic ball joint um, I would like to express here that uh, using universal joint uh, gave me some problems which are the play the universal joint had some play in it so 
you can guess a lot of vibrations was was going when I was operating my plant. Uh, of course, not all universal joints have this problem. If you bought a high, high quality universal joint, uh, it might not have this play, and you could uh, ignore this problem and go live your life happily. Um, in my case, uh, it was giving me a lot of uh, vibrations. It does the job. I'm not saying that it will make your life uh, a nightmare, but it does the job. However, uh, an interesting thing, I, I think an interesting choice would be the magnetic ball joint because it doesn't have a play at all. However, the disadvantage of the magnetic ball joint is that you require much higher torque to rotate this joint. There's a very powerful magnet that's holding this joint and you need a high torque to operate it. And I'm not sure if uh, your motor is powerful enough to do this task. Uh, another tricky choice that I do while designing is the ratio K, which is the distance, uh, which is this uh, distance 60 over this distance, which is 90, which is uh, the length of the uh, servo arm. Uh, and uh, so it's DC over DM. DC is this length, is the length between the rod and the main rod, which is 60. And the M is the length between the rod and the servo uh, rotating center axis. So this ratio is a, like the magic ratio. It's the most important ratio behind all of this, uh, this uh, uh, plant. Why? Uh, we will see why in the modeling. It will be more convenient to see this in the equation of motion. And so i will continue now i will ignore and i will continue uh last thing is the flexibility and customization using slide weights uh, when i wanted to manufacture this prototype i was careful about uh, doing a prototype that is flexible that means i can change some of these dimensions uh, freely without the need of uh, designing it again and again and manufacturing it again so I made sure that all of my equipments can slide can change in dimension so this ball can slide the forward and backward and even the, the supports of these servo motors can change um, simply everything can change uh, for the choice of the motor so what I did is I assumed uh, a mass of the ball, a very heavy ball, uh, to be rolling on my plate. So I give it a 0 0.1 kilogram. I assumed a critical situation that the plate is going to be handled by one servo motor. Uh, and I, uh, I multiplied by a customizability factor or name it a safety factor uh, as you want of two. Uh, because maybe the user would like to use a double the length of this servo arm so that gives double the required torque so I uh, multiplied it by 2 I multiplied at the end by 10 because I want to ensure that my servo motor and this is a rule of thumb by the way uh, to multiply the required torque by 10 to ensure that the servo motor will operate in the continuous region so I came up at the end with a uh, a torque roughly speaking uh, 8.4 kilograms centimeter and when I went to uh, the manufacturers catalogs I found this pretty neat uh, motor which can do the job pretty well done uh, however don't be don't be tripped here this is this was not my first choice I tried something before this motor and it gave me a headache because uh, when you want to choose a servo motor, it's not only about the the speed and the required, the rated uh, torque that this servo can that servo motor can can give, but also you need to get a motor that is quite accurate and uh, quick in its response speed. And these two informations uh, are not given by manufacturers, so you need to read about it in the open source community. 
so now uh, the electrical design is pretty simple all we need is an Arduino that is hooked uh, to two servo motors that are powered externally the, serv the Arduino is taking the command from the computer which is doing the image processing of the footage coming from the camera of course if you want to control our plan and design a controller we need to model our plan um, so we begin by this uh, sketch that uh, describes the dynamics of our system uh, I want you to uh, focus on these two angles which are the angle alpha and theta they are very important uh, they will appear a lot in the equation so you better uh, remember that alpha is the angle of the plate and theta is the angle of the servo arm and uh, of course here we are only taking one direction which is direction X bear in mind that we have direction X and we have direction Y however we said that in the two dof uh, volume plates we don't uh, 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 sorry when we have two dof uh, volume plates the actuators are decoupled that means whatever goes for the uh, direction X goes also for the direction y therefore uh, it's only enough to model one direction so we begin with applying the Lagrangian formulation which is this uh, equation uh, it has some derivative of the Lagrangian and the Lagrangian is nothing but the difference between the kinetic energy and the potential energy uh, the the kinetic energy has two components which is the linear uh, kinetic energy and the rotational kinetic energy this is the potential uh, energy for the QI it's the external forces so it's the, um, the friction because we only have one external force which is the friction here and we come uh, at the end with a, an equation of motion for the ball so secondly we want to get an equation of motion for the the motor and we assumed a second order uh, system for this motor we will talk later on if this second order uh, assumption is good or not and how to determine these parameters so now we have two uh, equation of motions however they are not related by any means so we need a third equation that can relate angle alpha with angle theta uh, to to get this relation we can go back to our geometry knowledge in our math knowledge and try to to get an analytical uh, solution for this relationship by uh, applying this e equation uh, and from this equation we can get uh, a system of two equations uh, to do that by by hand is is quite uh, difficult and uh, complex and it will give you a lot of headache so what I did is I went to Simulink and there is a very interesting uh, library called Simscape where you can simulate mechanical systems uh, so it's, like, it's exactly like Simulink, however, you deal with mechanical and physical uh, components instead of only numerical stuff. Uh, so as you can see on the left, it's, it's just a block diagram that connects uh, these uh, parts together by joints, and each part has a uh, has a has a different length. All of these are. Uh, programmed here in this uh, block diagram of course all these uh, simulation files and CAD files and even software codes are going to be available on the github repository in the description link in the links uh, uh, in the links in the description so <clears throat> after doing this uh, interesting simulation we can get a numerical solution about the relationship between alpha and theta as you can see on the x-axis we have theta and on the y-axis we have 
alpha and what you see here in the dashed line is the numerical solution uh, for the relationship between alpha and theta. However, this relationship, uh, like we said, it's pretty complex and hard to do by hand. And it's gonna be also uh, like it's, it's very complicated to put it on a piece of paper. So we found out that actually there exists a much simpler uh, assumption, a much simpler uh, relationship that is not uh, actually correct, but it's an assumption, it's an approximation to the real numerical solution, which is sine theta equal k sine alpha. And by k, I mean uh, that the, you, if you remember, you can go back to the to the to some slides before where I discussed what is k. It's the r uh, ratio between uh, a over c a is the distance between the rod and the main rod and c is the length of the servo arm so if we uh, apply this relationship we can see that it almost matches the numerical solution so we can actually adopt this simple so this simple approximation it can uh, it can be very easy for us to to put it in the uh, in the equations and uh, it will make our lives very easier. One thing we can do also is that, as you can see, our equation of motions and this relationship has uh, non-linearities because we are having trigonometric terms in our equations. And of course, if we have non-linearities, uh, designing a controller, building a state space model, uh, could be a headache so in order to build a linear time invariant state space model uh, we need to linearize our uh, equations and since my plate let me go back a little bit so yeah th this plate since my plate uh, I'm sure that is going to be rotating under 15 degrees and this is of course something that you can restrict uh, a constraint mechanically or by software uh, so I'm sure that alpha is going to be between minus and plus 15 degrees so this relationship can be linearized uh, into this relationship so now when I applied everything back into my equations of motion I come up with these two simple equations which are totally linear, they don't have any trigonometric terms. Last thing I want to do is to determine these uh, parameters. In order to do that, well, I need to do, to, uh, I do some system identification. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not going to go really deep into how to apply that in MATLAB or or talk about it uh, in details I'm just going to say that uh, all you need is a, um, a system identification for the for your uh, for this uh, equation and you can do that by uh, given giving a certain input alpha R to your system and uh, reading the angle uh, alpha so what you need is a sensor that can read the angle alpha. Of course, uh, this can be a headache to get a sensor that can measure angles and to install it on your plant and all that. So a lot of people who want to, to design such plant, they go directly and assume some values which are uh, close to these two values. However, me, I wanted to be sure about the values that I'm going to choose uh, in order to reduce uncertainties as much as possible. So what I did is I used my phone. Yes, my smartphone. The smartphone have accelerometer that can read angles. So what I did is I, I placed my phone on the plate and I give it a certain input and when the plate rotated I got readings 
of the angle and therefore I now have I now have a transfer function uh, between uh, angle alpha and the reference angle alpha that I give and you can see that here in the green th these are real measurements and the system identification that you do in MATLAB is the curve here in the yellow of course you can choose what uh, order of the system that you're trying to identify uh, in my case I chose the second order uh, and uh, actually it's pretty clear from the behavior of this green curve that it is um, that it can be identified as second order in reality it's not as you can see there's uh, small vibrations so higher order um, but of course at the end this is just an assumption an approximation we just want to build a, a model that can work as close as, as possible from the real plant um, so after the identification I came up with a transfer function that is in this form so it's pretty easy when I have a transfer function like that to get these two values so uh, first what I do is I go to this term which is the term that doesn't have a, a Laplace uh, multiplier and I do the square root of this and I, uh, I obtain omega n and for these two it's quite uh, it's quite convenient what to do to, to, to get the superimeters now I can build my linear time invariant state space model so, uh, by applying this very popular form uh, that is called the LTI state space model and using these uh, states, which are the position, the velocity, uh, the angle alpha and the, uh, the angular velocity in, uh, alpha dot as states and uh, alpha r, which is the reference angle alpha as an input and the position of the ball as the output, I can build a linear state space model in this form, where this matrix is A, this is B, C, and D. So, uh, this slide is only to show you that I'm going to be operating in this region, because I'm sure that alpha is going to be under 15 degrees. Uh, so, as you can see, my linearized plant matches almost exactly the non-linear plant however if I was to use my system uh, if I was to use my my plant for an angle alpha which is more than 15 then what whatever I did to linearize my equations doesn't work for me however I'm going to be operate here so I'm, I'm pretty good uh, interesting things to check before we uh, proceed to designing the controller are the uh, states of equilibrium the stability the controllability and observability I'm not going into uh, details because uh, after all this is not a course to teach you uh, uh, control system design you should go and read and learn all about it and then um, after coming to, to, to see this video, you have an idea of what these things are. Uh, I found that the states of equilibrium are all the points on my plate. Whenever x dot b and alpha and alpha dot are equal to zero. And this, is, uh, this makes sense, actually. If you want to uh, interpret it physically in real life, this makes sense. Stability analysis, I found out that my system is not Bebo stable because when I get the eigenvalue of my matrix A, one of them is at the origin. For the controllability, I saw that the controllability matrix and the observability matrix are both full rank, so the system is controllable and observable uh, to give you a fast physical interpretation for this 
controllable means that I can use, theoretically I can use an arbitrary input kx that can stabilize my system and observable means that with only having the uh, displacement of the ball x uh, xb I can uh, I can fully estimate the states of the system I want to apologize because there's a mistake here uh, my output is x it should be xb not xr I'm not sure if this mistake was here yeah it is also here uh, so yeah apologies for for this mistake uh, to design the controller you should come up first with some requirements and I, I, I actually manually put these requirements because uh, I found these requirements are reasonable for such a plant you can put any requirements you want but then you would have to uh, challenge yourself into finding a controller that would fulfill these requirements uh, to design this controller you can do ball placement or loop shaping so what you can do is uh, uh, first of all is to plot the root locus of your system without the controller and uh, what we can see here is we can notice that the system has four poles uh, we can also notice that it's a fourth uh, uh, we can also notice that even if it's a fourth order system it can be uh, treated as a second order system as long as these two poles are far away from the vertical axis uh, we can also see that the system is not people stable because we have one of the ball one of the poles on uh, the origin so sorry uh, so we can conclude that an integrator will make things worse so what I did is I implemented a PD controller with a low-pass filter so a PD controller with a low-pass filter uh, it, it means that it is uh, it consists of a zero and a pole and as you can see this is my zero here uh, and this is my pole and uh, for the zero I tried to put it as close as possible from the uh, origin uh, uh, from the pole at the origin and this uh, approach is called a uh, pole cancellation and to make sure that my designer will fulfill the requirements that I gave it I made this blue area which um, which make me sure that if I if I put all my poles away from this blue area I will fulfill the requirements for the overshoot and for the settling time and with, with some graphical tweaking I reached this uh, PD uh, configuration and when I uh, plot the step response it gives me this nice uh, step response however in reality it's not as simple as that you have uh, discrete signals you have the saturation of your actuator you have delays you have noise in your sensor of course all of that gives you problems so when I apply my PD on this uh, model it doesn't give me the expected behavior so I wanted to know what is the reason for this uh, bad behavior and when I went to plot the um, comment signal that my controller is giving I saw that it is actually uh, saturated here and uh, this is because my actuators are saturated for an angle of 15 degrees and that was the reason why uh, my step response was not as expected so I went back and I tried the same approach but this time I used different uh, gains and uh, different parameters for the PT and low pass filter and I came up with this uh, behavior which was good so now I wanted to apply this controller on my real plant and it's called validation 
So the red curve is the readings, uh, the real readings of my plant, and uh, as you can see, they don't match e each other's even using the same controller. And uh, I have two reasons for that actually. First reading is I didn't uh, model the static friction of the ball, and uh, there was some uncertainties in the delay of the Arduino. Of course, to, to know how much you have a uh, delay in your system uh, in Python or in whatever programming language, you can put some timestamps and know how much time does it take between each uh, clock cycle and between each cycle in your program. Uh, and for the camera, I know that the camera is taking 30 FPS. So I can also know the delay. However, for the Arduino, it's uh, hard, it's impossible to know that without a model called a clock module. I didn't have that module, so I was not sure how much delay was in inside the Arduino. Uh, however, if I go back to Simulink and I increase the delay of the Arduino, I can come up with something similar to this real uh, plant behavior. Um, However, that's, that's, uh, this is close enough. I mean, I'm only doing that to come up with a controller that at least uh, is close from a good solution on my real plan. And this is already good. So I went to my real plan and I uh, tweaked this solution that I came up with er earlier. I, as you can see, this is a comparison of many PD controllers that I tried. And as you can see, the one in the cyan color is uh, the, the, the best, the sweetest between all of them. And, uh, and yeah, I, I, I adopted this solution, actually. Uh, but as you know, uh, we are only giving here a step reference, but in reality, you can give a periodic reference, for example, as a sinusoidal function or, or anything else. And so I have here uh, an interesting slide to see, which is a sinusoidal uh, function given as a reference. Uh, and applying my PD controller that I came up with earlier, it shows that the response has a delay and has an overshoot, which is expected. Uh, PD controllers are not uh, good for such references. Uh, that's the most that you can get, I would say. Uh, there exist many other controllers that are exactly for, for periodic references, such as a resonance, uh, resonance controller or a repetitive controller. Um, I don't know, I'm not quite experienced in that field, but there exist a lot of controllers that can do the job. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about the implementation really fast. I know you guys have been bored. It's been 45 minutes until now. And we still didn't see the plate, uh, the, the, the plant in motion. So uh, what I can say here is that uh, <clears throat> there is two pieces of code actually w running in parallel. One is on my computer, the workstation, and the other one is on the Arduino. For the workstation, uh, it begins with initializing the serial communication, and then we define the ball color that we want to track, and then the reference point that we want to go to. Uh, of course, we're doing image processing, so we need to detect the ball color in order to track its motion and in we have here an infinite loop so each time I go inside this loop I capture a footage from the camera I process this image to get the X and Y how do I process it you would ask uh, well simply I would say there exist many libraries that can do that such as open TV and what OpenCV does is uh, it filters out the image uh, by a certain color. And then all the areas that have this uh, certain color that you selected, you can get a centroid of this area. And this, this centroid will be uh, the position X, for example, of the ball. 
So to continue, you calculate a control signal based on the readings and then you saturate these control signals and you encode it because you want to send it via serial communication to your Arduino and you save the previous states in case you had an integrator or a derivator and you want to save a previous um, state. Uh, for the Arduino, it begins with initializing the pins, output, input, and initializing the serial communication. And in each loop, we are going to go to the uh, serial buffer and check if we have a message there coming that came from our computer. If there is, we want to read this message, parse it, because it contains two information. First information is for, is for the first servo motor, second information is for the second servo motor, and then we update our outputs and go back into our um, infinite loop. On the right here is just uh, I wanted to demonstrate that I'm using a lookup table to map between the angle alpha and theta because, as we know, the relationship between them is nonlinear and to do that. In, uh, in software, you need to do a lookup table. Uh, this is a small demonstration of the GUI. Uh, I want to be extra careful in saying that this GUI is actually, uh, let's say, mostly developed by a guy called uh, Johan Link, which I want to express my gratitude to him. Uh, because he gave me the the, the stepping stone, the, the the pillar on where to start building my my GUI, uh, he actually developed this GUI to uh, control his plant, which was a, th a three DOF plant. So I took his uh, GUI, I made it work on my two DOF plant. So I changed a lot of uh, stuff in it. I translated from French to English. And I added some interesting features such as the uh, uh, these uh, sliders and in the plotting you can plot in real time the behavior, uh, the, the response and the reference and uh, I added some features there. Uh, I haven't talked to Johan Link yet but I think in the future I will co contact him and express my gratitude in helping me in indirect way uh, and we'll proceed here for the conclusion for the conclusion I want to say that at the end I came up with all these achievements uh, I had some problems on the way uh, and these are the solutions for these problems uh, for the future improvements uh, I would like someone to implement advanced controllers other than this PD that I came up with. I would like someone to optimize the structure because it's not damped. It has a lot of uh, structure vibration. And I could fully utilize the camera because I was only using 30 FPS, but it is giving me a 60 FPS. However, uh, my professor told me that yeah, using higher frame rate per second, that means you are having more footages to do image processing. That means you're gonna have a delay, high, much more delay for the image processing. So one advantage versus a big disadvantage. And at the end, uh, maybe I can remove the computer and the Arduino and replace them by a Raspberry Pi that can do the job of these both things. So for the video demo, uh, I will go directly to my video folder. Uh, I'm going to show this video first. I know the resolution is bad. However, here I was just trying to test the uh, noise uh, rejection. And I'm filming also the screen that can show the uh, GUI. As you can see, it's pretty cool, isn't it? If you zoom in a little bit on the screen, I'm gonna try to 
need some force to always come back to the center. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry I haven't captured a lot of videos for my plan, but I think this video will give a full demonstration. Again, I would like to express my gratitude to Johan Link, who uh, made this GUI uh, mostly. Uh, uh, of course, I did a lot of uh, additional features and modification to it, uh, but it remains uh, his... Uh, how can I say? He put the stepping stone for me, and I'm forever grateful for him. Uh, as you can see, the ball is tracking with the reference that I'm giving. It's pretty neat. You can change the PID parameters in real time. You can plot it in real time. Here I'm plotting X and Y at the same time. You can um, you can disable uh, Y, for example, and only visualize X. I added this feature where you can write a log file, so you log these uh, readings into a uh, text file and maybe you can then uh, use it in MATLAB. So it's uh, pretty interesting, you can, see, you can find this video actually in the repository, so there's no point in spending much more time here to show you the video where you can go and see it yourself in the repository however it's a good approach to show you my final result this is when I'm tracking a sinusoidal reference so a circular trajectory uh, as you can see there's a delay Especially line use very high circular speed and can if I show the plot it's gonna show you this is only in the X position. I can change the the PD parameters in real time so you can visualize the change in the plot I'm gonna skip 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 yeah okay other than the circular trajectory we have an 8 trajectory also which is interesting Johan Link came up with these uh, trajectory seriously man I'm very grateful thank you Johan Link I'm sure he would be <laughs> seeing this video be being proud of himself that his tool was used uh, for a master student um, it was pretty helpful thank you man so here I'm trying a different uh, ball with a different so I click on it to change the color that I want to track now I need to press on the start button again to Yeah, okay, you know, you know the story now. So I want to thank you for uh, watching this uh, uh, big presentation. I would say it took one hour. Uh, usually for my thesis defense, I wanted to do it in 20 minutes. So I was very pretty on a lot of points. However, uh, for this video we discussed uh, all the major points if you have any questions please uh, ask me in the comments or send or I don't know go to my github uh, you can find uh, everything you want send me emails I would be happy to help feel free to use my content uh, Feel free to use the GUI, it's mostly done by Johan Link. Uh, I would like to also uh, show you his page. This is Johan Link. Uh, I'm a 
big fan, dude. I'm a really big fan. Uh, he's saying that he's an 18 years old student living in Switzerland and he loves robotics, computers, 3D printing, etc. Well, uh, for an 18 year old to come up with such a neat plan with a complex uh, electrical design, I would say I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. Uh, if you go to his, to his uh, project, this is his project. It's a three off plan, so it has three pillars, and uh, all of this is his uh, 3D design, CAD design. So that's pretty uh, impressive. He won actually a prize for doing this uh, project. Okay, so enough uh, paparazzi work here. I'm just gonna uh, scroll. Yeah, as you can see, this is the Git that I'm. This is the GUI that I was using. Uh, however, uh, you need to do a lot of modifications to transform it from a a three DOF to two DOF. And yeah. Okay. Uh, lastly, I want to show you the repository, the repo for this project that I will. Uh, I will put the link in the description. Uh, it has all, uh, it has whatever you want, all the files, the CAD, uh, some interesting papers to read, this presentation, and the code and videos. And if you want to implement it uh, by yourself, you can also read the, this uh, small simple readme where it tells you the prerequisites and how to deploy this project on your computer and make it work yourself. So thank you very much. Uh, if you like the video, please like and subscribe. And um, uh, actually, I don't put uh, I don't put. I don't usually put educational uh, content on my uh, channel, but uh, this was my uh, master thesis and uh, I wanted to share it. Uh, usually I put gaming content, so don't be confused if you saw a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, gaming stuff on my channel. Thank you very much and bye bye.